Hey boys and girls, welcome to another super exciting, outrageous toy review. Hey boys and girls, welcome to another super exciting, outrageous toy review live stream. We're going to let the uh, cat populate a little bit there before we get started, but I have a whole box of Masters of the Universe pint size heroes to unbox. Funko sent me a box a few weeks ago. I unboxed them on a live stream. There was something a little wacky about the box, and I didn't get very many characters. It was a special package that. What's going on? If you're hanging out, make sure you say hi so I can see that you're watching. I got my Battle Armor He-Man and regular He-Man pop vinyl here. And these are the three characters I got in the previous pack that I mentioned. I previously got five Evil Inns, five Fakers, and five Stratoses. These were the FYE exclusives. And like I mentioned, it was just a weird case that I ended up with. So uh, this box should have all of the characters in it, hopefully. Let's see, maybe I can prop it up a little bit higher so you can see it a little bit more. All right. <laughs> All right, so I guess we're going to get ready to start. So, hey, boys and girls, welcome to another super exciting, outrageous toy review. Today, I'm opening a box of Funko Pint Size Heroes based on Masters of the Universe. It was really awesome, my friends at Funko, to send this over, and we're going to unbox this whole case and see which characters we get. You can see there's a He-Man and Skeletor in the window in the front, and the rest of the package shows off the designs of a lot of the characters. All right, there's a little spout on the front here. I'm gonna pop that down. Hey, John. Yeah, so this box should be a standard box, so hopefully I get some better pulls than last time. All right, the first one. The Sorceress. All right. She's pretty cool. That was a figure I always wanted as a kid, and they didn't make her till the end of the original Masters of the Universe line. And I remember seeing her and Randor in KB Toy Stores, and I was done with He-Man at that point, and was like, oh, I wish they had made those. I'd, I'd moved on to G.I. Joe or something else. All right, next one. We got, ooh, Trap Jaw. Love them. I got the Pop Vinyl Trap Jaw right here, actually. You can see they're kind of similar. Different style eyes on the, uh, on the little guys, the Pint Size Heroes. Next pack. Yes. Yes. Got a Flocked Moss Man. Ooh, he's so fuzzy. Mossman was one of my favorite characters as a kid. B, uh, Buzz Off, I was about to say B-Man. Buzz Off, Fisto, and Mossman were like three of my favorite figures I had as a kid. And the flockness is so good. I didn't realize as a kid that Beastman and Mossman were the same right away because I didn't own a Beastman figure. And then when I got him, I was like, oh, he's got the same face as Mossman, but new Beastman came out first. I was like, this is really weird. All right. Next pack. So it's nice to be getting some variety this time. Oh, <laughs> I, sh I shouldn't have spoke. As soon as I said variety, we got a double. These guys are all supposed to be 1 in 12, so I should get two of uh, two different, fit, you know, two duplicates of each figure, but there should be you know, 12 different characters. So hopefully that's how this case works out. Next one. What do we have? Oh, we got the double of the sorceress. Sweet. Move the doubles to the back row here with the other guys. So you can see your front row better. Make some room. All right, next pack. Yes, we got Orko. <laughs> what a great figure. Orko was one of the original Masters of the Universe figures that I wanted really bad as a kid and never had him. I, I don't know how I missed him. 
Uh, it seems like everybody had Orko, but I never did. Always, always cool. I love playing with them at friends' houses. All right, next pack. Beast Man. Oh, hey, man. Whoops, not going to trap troll down. There's Beast Man. Looking kind of angry. Arr. Cool. Next one. I had multiple Panthors as a kid. I think I had two, maybe three. I kept buying them at yard sales and like upgrading to ones at Flock because the Flock could rub off of him pretty easy. And uh, I, I had a lot of brand new He-Man figures, but I also had a lot that were uh, secondhand because He-Man started in 1982, which is the year I was born. So a lot of the first year or so figures I just didn't get. And then when I was in nursery school or kindergarten, I started getting, you know, the, the figures that were current for really like the Snake Man and stuff like that. Um, Buzz Off and Moss Man. All right. Next baggy. Skeletor! <laughs> he -Man. So we got a Skeletor. I actually did get a Skeletor in the last box they sent me because of the ones in the window. Um, <laughs> when the whole rest of the case was all duplicates. Well, I'll put him up here with He-Man. Can he stand on He-Man's head? That's never going to last. We'll see how, how long I can keep him up there for this video. All right, next one. The most powerful man in the universe. E man. All right. Can he stand over here on battle armor, he man? Beautiful. What else do we have? So I'm looking at the back here. We do not have any man at arms or any. Mermans yet. So those are the two I'm out of space. Can these guys squeeze over? Squeeze over, squeeze over, squeeze over. Go. Next one. E man. Alright, so we're in the we're in duplicate zone until we hit a merman here. Who do we have? Who do we have? Oh, I forgot about Battle Cat. Oh, yes. <laughs> so not a duplicate. That's exciting. I totally forgot Battle Cat was in there. I must have missed him on the back of the package. Uh, hidden between the two Flocks characters. So we got Battle Cat. He's got his armor on. It would be cool if they made a Cringer if they do a Wave 2 of these. Because I think the Cowardly version would be a lot of fun. Hey, Chris. Chris from Long's Toys is on. Uh, check out his channel if you get a chance sometime. Let's see what else we've got. The double battle cat, of course, sitting right next to each other. <laughs> I always thought it was weird how much art there was at the beginning of the series where Battle Cat didn't wear his helmet. Like the uh, the packaging, painting for for Battle Cat, the helmet was off, and uh, there's some other like artwork. Beach, I had a beach towel as a kid that, that where he didn't wear the helmet. Next one. Ah, there he is. Hey, man. Oh. I need my sea spray voice or, or uh, merman voice. Oh, no. There he is. He's got his, his goofy armor there with the little bow tie at the bottom. Bottom of his belt. Can you see it? Almost. All right. So we got the full set now of the standard release. So the rest of these guys are going to be doubles. I did see, Chris, I did see the Toys That Made Us episode of Masters of the Universe. I've seen every episode of it so far. Uh, I really like the series. I especially enjoyed those first four. I think they were really strong. Um, the new the new series, um, the, the second season they're calling it, I think the Transformers one and the Hello Kitty one suffered a little bit from having to have translators. It just wasn't quite as engaging, I didn't think. Although I did enjoy the Transformers episode. I thought the Star Trek was the the funniest or the coolest of the, the second set of four, just because it, it had so much weird stuff, all the weird, you know, like failed toy lines. All right, next one. 
the second moss man. There's nobody here to ask to feel my moss man. All right, put him over here. Oh, that's how long Skeletor lasted. I need Power Rangers and TMNT next season. Yes, I think I think they probably should be doing Power Rangers, Ninja Turtles, Hot Wheels, and My Little Pony. That that would be my picks. I think for the next four. Who do we have? Oh, Tila. I really did not do a good job of looking at the back of the pack. <laughs> I forgot about Battle Cat and I forgot about Tila. Captain of the Guard at the King's Palace, daughter of the Sorceress. Spoiler alert. In case anybody was going to back and watch a 30 year old show. Uh, and adoptive daughter of Man at Arms. Yeah, Chris, Thundercats would be good too. It's a, a little bit shorter line. I think even if they just did like LJN in general, uh, if they couldn't do Thundercats, but I think Thundercats would be great. Because uh, LJN had some other wacky toy lines that were all short, like um, the Dungeons and Dragons toys and even just some stuff about their video games would be cool. Merman! <laughs> Got the other merman. Running out of space here. <laughs> uh oh. Who's next? There's the other man at arms. Tila, isn't it past your bedtime? Oh, Dad. It's Saturday. We don't have school tomorrow. Okay, you can stay up. Next one. Who do we got? Skeletor! <laughs> Back on top, where he belongs. We're running out of we're running out of packs. Oops. Sit there, box. How many we got? We got four. Left. Second Panther. Fuzzy Kitty. That's good. Next one. Beast Man. Oh, He Man. Now he's on top. What we got next? The second Tila. And one more. The final pack, right? Can we get them all out of here? Knocking stuff down. Yep, the last pack. Who am I getting a double of today? Orko! It's my best rendition of his theme song. All right, so this is a better look at the Funko Half Pint Heroes. That first case I unboxed was a goofy mix. Uh, like I said, it was for internal use and they accidentally sent it to me. So it, it only had the exclusives from FYE in it, <laughs> which made for a, a pretty poor unboxing. So now I got a lot more characters, which is a lot of fun. These things are pretty cool. They're kind of like Dorbs, but miniature. They're kind of like Pops, but miniature. Uh, they're, they're their own unique thing. I've done a bunch of these unboxings before. I did Five Nights at Freddy's. I did uh, Power Rangers. So if you want to see more half point here, uh, if you want to see more half point heroes, make sure you check out other videos on this channel. Uh, thanks for watching this super exciting, outrageous tour of you. Make sure to like, subscribe, and check out our other videos. All right, what do we got here? Love your channel, you're awesome. Thank you, dude. Retro now, hey. So I'm gonna keep going. I just always shoot an intro and an outro for every like segment, so I can chop these up later. Uh, kind of makes live streaming a more uh, useful thing. Just notice for Pixel Dancer. Oh yeah, got to rock Pixel Dan, my all time favorite YouTuber. Uh, he's such a nice guy. He's so cool. Uh, okay, thought it was in. Yeah, no, I just I just kind of do it in segments so I can recycle uh, this stuff to give me videos later. Pixel Dan is awesome. He's like the nicest guy on the planet. Like he's, people think he's an act sometimes. I've met him uh, and hung out with him. I'm friends with him and he's always super genuine, super, super awesome. 
he's going to be coming to RetroCon. He's going to be here in Pennsylvania in October. And I'm super excited to get to hang out with him again and uh, maybe even get to, you know, pal around for a little while. I'm definitely getting to moderate his panel at RetroCon. So I'm excited for that. So I have some other stuff here that I could shoot. Uh, I might get rid of some of these pint size heroes for doing it. Yeah, I, Chris, I'll definitely introduce you to Dan. He he's awesome, and uh, anybody anybody locals gotta gotta come to the show and meet him. Let's see where oh they're hiding underneath stuff. I have everything propped on top of the other things I was gonna unbox. This isn't very smart. Let's get the half point heroes off to the side. There we go. What else we got here? He man battle armor. He man can go over here. Oops. Uh, dude, did you get the NECA turtles? I had them in my car all three days and got them removed before. So, Retro Now, I do not know whether I got them or not. Um, at my day job, I can't go on the internet when I want. I'm kind of... It's just the downfall of, of the field I'm in. that The internet is controlled, and I can't take a break when I want. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm on a set schedule. I don't get the P, uh, unless it's in between classes. So I can't go on and try and get that kind of stuff. So Rose and Tony from RetroCon tried to get me a set. They're not sure if it worked. Uh, they know they're getting a set, but, uh, they they tried getting it, like using a second account or whatever to get, uh, to get another one. And so I don't know whether, whether that worked out, they were waiting to see, and I just haven't heard back. Saw Toy Fair video he did where he showed off a bunch of half-shell heroes that never happened. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff at Toy Fair that never comes out. Because basically at Toy Fair, they want to show all the stuff they would like to make. And then the companies, the, the purchasers, decide what they're going to purchase. And so sometimes if there's a toy that just doesn't sell, it doesn't come out. If they don't get enough orders. Uh, an example of that, there's a G.I. Joe character called Quinn that was created for the comic books. And... They wanted to make a Quinn action figure. They had made one in, in the early 2000s, but they wanted to make one in his like typical uniform. But he had never had an action figure. It was just a character from the comic. He's an Eskimo, but he wears like a khaki shirt and khaki pants. Not a super exciting-looking action figure, but but very popular with the, the old-school collectors. And Walmart and the other people that were buying Waves wouldn't carry that character. So he got like bumped off. He did eventually come out, but it, it took them a long time to be able to produce him. And that sometimes happens with these other things. Uh, gotcha. Hopefully we get the, get one. Yeah. Hopefully I get one. Uh, I might just borrow Tony's to review if he's definitely get one. Uh, what are your thoughts on the new Thundercats? <sighs> I, I'm so mixed on the new Thundercats. So I love Thundercats. It's a great show. I, I've got Lion-O over there. Um, I really wanted the classics line to continue that Super 7's making. If, uh, if, if there's any way this show can, revitalize the brand, uh, get some new fans into it, and then therefore they decide to release classic Thundercats merchandise, t-shirts, action figures, whatever, then I think it's a good thing. But I think the goofy nature of the designs in the show is going to be really hard for old fans to swallow. Um, yes, Chris, I would love Thundercats, Imagine X. I would love any retro Thund Imagine X. I can't believe we don't have He-Man Imagine X stuff yet. Uh I was really hoping that the Mega Constructs figures from He-Man would kind of prove to Mattel that they should be making uh, more He-Man stuff. And uh, so so the new show, it's goofy looking. I'm definitely going to watch a few episodes. Uh, I'm not a huge Steven Universe fan, but I ha I did watch a bunch of it. I was doing some, some viewing, actually, as research for the channel. And um, I actually like the, the new Adventures of Gumball. I don't watch it regularly, but I, I find it entertaining and it's kind of goofy. And everybody was telling me like, while I was at work and the news of the Thundercat show was breaking, uh, I was getting texts about, did you see the, the adventures of gumball version of Thundercats? Uh, so we'll have to see. It's not, I don't want to say it's not my Thundercats, but it's definitely, it's definitely an adjustment. So I don't know. Anybody have any other questions real quick before we move on to the next segment? And then, then I can do more Q and A's. After that, all right, so, 
Hey boys and girls, welcome to another super exciting, outrageous toy review. Today we're taking a look at two Masters of the Universe Funko Pops. We have Pop 566 and 565, Evil Lynn and Orko. I picked up both of these at Uncanny at the King of Prussia Mall. It's a uh, comic book store there, and I was hanging out there a couple weekends ago, walking around, and I saw both of these guys and decided I better grab them because... You know, they just don't make enough Masters of the Universe merchandise, and I definitely wanted to to support the line and, and, and grab these guys. I have a whole shelf of Funko Pops. I know some people are really into them. Some people really dislike them. Uh, it's sort of a weird thing. They're th I think they're cool for what they are. Um, they don't replace action figures, in my in my opinion. You know, like, they're, they're not the same thing, but they're fun to collect and fun to show off. In fact, this He-Man right here, the regular He-Man, is the first Funko Pop I ever bought. And then I recently picked up Battle Armor He-Man. All right, so we're going to open these guys up and take a look at them. Here's Evil Lynn. Ooh, does she have a figure stand? Because she's never going to stand without it. Ah, Funko, you guys are smart. Figure stand. She's got two pegs. That's unusual. Oh, they are pinned differently. There's a big hole and a small hole. There we go. Now she can stand. And Orko, the back of the package. Put that one on screen for you. We've got Battle Armor Skeletor, who I'm still looking for. Battle Armor He-Man, Beastman, Stratos, Orko, Evelyn, and Merman. Get Orko out of here. Right. Ooh, he's got his own little base there. All right, so Evil Lynn is the evil, obviously by her name. Sorceress that works with Skeletor. Uh, I think in the in the 2000X show, her name was Evelyn Powers, because uh, they kind of gave everybody a more realistic name, and then they also had their sort of like nickname to go with it. She's wearing uh, a purple outfit. She has the flesh-colored skin, which is more like the Filmation cartoon show than the toy that had yellow skin. She does have her cape there, which... I don't really remember her wearing that in the Filmation show at all, if at ever, maybe maybe once in a while. But definitely in the 2000X cartoon show, she wore a cape a lot. She does have her little scepter there in her hand. It's like a, a, a light blue talon holding a sphere, which I think looks pretty good. She's got a lot of glossy black paint as well as some purple and blue. She's got her hand out. She's going to cast a spell. It's pretty cool. All right. The other guy we have here, a, this is a good pairing. We've got good music, a good magician versus evil magician. We've got Orko, the court magician. On his own world, he's a really powerful wizard. But here, on, well, not here, on Eternia, where He-Man takes place, he is a kind of a goofball because he doesn't have the same powers. He's got his magic wand there in his hand, which looks bent from the angle I'm at. It's kind of an optical illusion there. Uh He's got his shirt with the big O on the front. He's got his scarf and his hat to cover up his face because the Trollins, his race, don't show their face except for to the people that they love. And uh, he's got a little flying stand. He was originally going to be called Gorpo, and they changed his name because the G on his chest wouldn't be symmetrical. And Filmation liked to flip the drawings for animation cells before they painted them a lot, and that would have made it harder to do. So... That's why he got his name changed. Uh, I think Orko is classic. I think it's I think it's more fun than Gorpo. So, those are my two newest Funko Pops. The Masters of the Universe collection is really uh, getting big. I'm trying to think, I would love. I think they made they did make Moss Man already. Uh, I would love a Pop Ride Battle Cat. There's a Door Bride Battle Cat, but I don't think they did a Pop one. Um, a Pop Ride Roton would be really cool, also, and. Buzz off. I want buzz off. I want a buzz off pop. So uh, I got to start petitioning Funko for those ones. Thanks for watching this super exciting, outrageous toy review. Make sure to like, subscribe, and check out our other videos. All right, guys. Thanks for sitting through that review. What do we got? Love buzz off. Uh, were you a fan of the 2002 Mass Universe? Series? Yes. So when I, when 2002, I was in college and I watched the episodes. Uh, whenever I knew they were on, they would change the schedule of it a lot, which made it hard. 
I'd watch it in my dorm room all the time. Uh, I, I think even my roommate kind of liked it. He he grew up with He Man, um, but he wasn't really like an action figure guy in college. He was a he was an army getting ready to go be an army ranger. Uh, but he did watch it with me. I never really bought the 2002 toys though because I was a poor college kid. I would look at them at uh, at the mall and stuff like that. Uh, and then eventually I got some at a yard sale, and then. I don't know. Sometime after I bought my house, I bought a pretty big collection of them. I, I'm missing some characters and missing some accessories, but the show is amazing, and it's a shame they didn't finish it. Uh, the designs for Horde for season four never had more sick. Yes, the Horde is so good in that series. The 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 Snake Men taking over would have been a really neat thing. I saw someone post that they're making Battle Cat and Panther pop rights. Oh yes, that is awesome. I'm gonna have to talk to. Uh, my connection at Funko and see if I can get them to send me those. Otherwise I'll be hunting them down, which is how it goes with most of the stuff. Hey, SEO. Hey, DJ. Uh, had that Orko in my hand. If I put back, why would you put Orko back? He's the best. Uh, and Chris is, ex oh, oh, he said exactly how I feel. Long's toys uh, about the Thundercat show. All right. Ready for another one? See what we got here. Because Funko just keeps coming up with new designs. Ooh, this is brutal with the lighting. Hey, how's it going? More people checking in. That's awesome. All right. So, hey, boys and girls. Welcome to another super exciting, outrageous toy review. Today, we're unboxing some Funko vinyl. We've got He-Man and Trapjaw. These are actually the first vinyl figures I'm collecting. Uh, it's its own vinyl period, vinyl dot, vinyl. I don't, I don't know if there's a specific way you're supposed to say that. I think just vinyl. Uh, but it's a new fact form factor. They had the um, pop vinyls. They have dorbs. They have pint size heroes. There's mystery minis. And now we've got vinyl. So we're going to open this up and check out this new form factor from Funko. It's not really super new. Uh, I just haven't picked up any of them before. I got these guys at the, uh, Will, uh, not Willow Grove, uh, King of Prussia. Toys R Us is going out of business the other weekend. Oh, these guys have stands already on their feet. They are removable. Okay. But they have even smaller feet than most of the pops so they need they need that support i guess well here's he-man pop vinyl versus vinyl <laughs> the the vinyls are definitely more expressive i like that they actually have um a little bit of facial features there with the the whites of the eyes and the the uh, blacks there see a retro now and but other than that, they're kind of similar. There's less sculpted detail in the body, though. So that's kind of interesting. More detail in the face, less detail in the body. So while He-Man has muscle sculpted in and he's got his sheath on the back and everything, the, whoa, the, <laughs> the vinyl figure has a torso similar to a Lego man, if you can see that there. Your dad watches He-Man? That's awesome. Oh, when he was small, he watched He-Man? Yeah. He's got his power sword there in his hand, just like this guy, because He-Man is nothing without his power sword. He needs that to... I have the power! But he looks pretty cool. He's got that one point of articulation similar to the Pops. Uh, but I think he's pretty neat. I kind of like him. I'm not sure that I would recollect every character I have a Pop vinyl of as a vinyl figure, but I definitely see... Having the different types of figures helps, you know, appeal different types of customers. And I think that Funko does a really good job of trying to attract uh, action figure collectors as well as people that are a little bit more mainstream and giving everybody something they like. Uh, do you have a flute? No, I don't. I don't have a flute. <laughs> uh, next up, we've got Trapjaw. So Trapjaw is from the same line. He has his arm with a hook sculpted on there, and that has a little bit more sculpted detail to it than the rest of his body, which has sort of that Lego brick form factor. Again, he's got those nice expressive eyes, and I'm going to pull up his Funko Pop so we can look at the two of them. 
So you can see that the, the vinyl figure is a little bit taller, way more expressive. Uh, but again, yeah, the body is a little bit more bland. The pop vinyl has the little, little laser blaster hand. While the vinyl figure has the hook. So, in the comments down below, let me know what you guys think of the vinyl figures. Are you into these guys, or uh, are you sticking with Pops, or, or you're not really into either version? Uh, I think they're kind of cool. This is this is sort of my first time looking at them. I did pick up a few other vinyls, and uh, we're going to check those out on this channel as well. So, thanks for watching this super exciting, outrageous tour review. Make sure to like, subscribe, and check out our other videos. All right, guys. So that's another chance to take a break for a second, answer some questions before I move on to other stuff. What do you think of the new TMNT cartoon? So the new Turtles cartoon is very similar to the new Thundercats in that they're going for a much younger audience. And I think that's going to be hard for a lot of um, longtime fans to accept. But um, I think it looks better. I think it looks better than the Thundercats show because it's not straight slapstick. It's still kind of an action adventure. Uh, I think they had to reboot the show, even though I love the previous version. They had just made so many action figures. And let's face it, the cartoon shows are there to sell toys. And if they're not making new cartoons, they're not selling new toys. So it, they just kind of needed to reboot so they can sell you another set of Turtles again. Uh, and another set of Master Splinter and Shredder and Bebop and Rocksteady and everybody else. Um, although they, they actually come up with a new bad guy for the series, so that could add some some fun and new interest to the show. It could actually be better than, I don't know, better, but maybe better than the previous cartoon, just because uh, how many times can you have the Turtles fight Shredder? Uh, and we've seen that in the past. You know, they the, the third Ninja Turtles movie, live-action movie, they didn't fight Shredder. And in the, um, the cartoon show, the original cartoon show, by the end, after se multiple seasons... They switched and had some other bad guys, and they even did it with the the previous season. You know, once they went into space, they didn't fight Shredder for a little while. So, you know, there's good and bad to all that stuff. I like the vinyls. Just received the Funko Shop Yogi Bear and Ranger two pack. Nice. That's pretty cool. Hey, boo boo. Uh, what do you think? Did I miss anybody else's comments? Because I love to. I bought that two pack though. Okay. So, let's see. You guys into Thundercats? Should we uh, should we talk about some Thundercats? I got some Thundercat vinyl here. Oh no, no, it's too high. There we go. We got it. <laughs> uh, I know as soon as I start talking, I'll get like a, another comment over there. So I was just sort of waiting for a second here. So next segment. So in case you guys are, are just joining us, I, I, I often chop up my live streams into to videos to, to re-upload later. Uh, so it kind of has like a beginning, middle, and an end. And then in between segments, I, I answer questions and and talk a lot. I do get distracted by the comments sometimes. So I do answer them in the middle a little bit. You have these also, John? That's awesome. Uh, do you like them? Before I open mine up. Um, they Again, I, I picked these guys up at Toys R Us on, on sale. And uh, I don't know whether they're making any more. There's no Tigra. Um, we previously reviewed some of the Thundercats Pops. You love them. They, we reviewed some of the Thundercats Pops on this channel, but they were my friends, uh, Paul, who, who's on here occasionally, uh, who was very active in the channel when, when I first started it. Um, he bought a bunch of the, the Thundercats Pops, and we reviewed them. You want one. All right. So here we go. Hey boys and girls, welcome to another super exciting, outrageous toy review. Today, we're unboxing two packs of Funko Thundercats vinyl. The top box has the main hero and main villain, lion -O and Mumra. And the bottom package has two of the, the main Thundercats from the team, Panthro and Chitara. Who was your favorite Thundercat? Panthro was mine as a kid. I loved Panthro. The original figure was cool. I always had him in the Thunder Tank driving around. Uh, I really, really, really liked him as a kid. Lionel, of course, is you know is the easy go-to one because he, he's the leader. But I thought Panthro was awesome. Let's 
get these guys opened up. Whoops. So the I previously reviewed some Masters of the Universe vinyls, and they came out of the package with their stands already clipped in. These guys, that didn't happen with. Let's see here. All right. There's those two. I'm going to unbox the second set. Not gonna stand without that finger stand. Oh, the back of the package, whoops, has artwork from the show there, showing the characters a little bit stylized. So previously, I was talking to some people about the new Thundercats cartoon show, and I am very intrigued with those designs. Whether they will be able to make action figures of those characters or if they're all going to just kind of end up being like um, you know, like mystery mini type toys like PVC toys because they're, they're they're really odd designs to try and articulate with the with all the kind of squishy anatomy they have this stuff going to go in here Arr. one peg doesn't want to go in this is Chitara's. I guess so. This is good. The joys of live streaming. I, I have actually reviewed a bunch of Five Nights at Freddy's Funko stuff. If you want to check it out on the channel, uh, check out the other videos. Dimitri. All right, let's see if we can get this one on here. There, there's a little bit of gunk in his foot peg there, and that's what's throwing me off here. Mm, there we go. Poked it through. Quality control issue fixed. Let's move these guys down. He-Man, out of the way. We've got Thundercats here. All right. So we've got the Thundercats out of the package. And it's time to take a closer look. <laughs> lion -O has his hair swept to the side, as always. It must have been windy, or he uses a lot of hair product. Uh, nobody else's hair ever seemed to be stuck off to the side like that, but lion -O's always was. He's got his sort of omens in his hand and the claw shield on the other hand there. He's got some decent details painted on, of course. His little ab section, uh, the little window in his outfit, and his Thundercat belt. It's all painted on his body there, which kind of reminds me of a... Lego figure, because it's kind of blocky. He does have a little detail on his hands, but I do like the expressive faces that these vinyl figures have as compared to the pop figures that have kind of blank stares on them all the time. Next up, we've got Mumra, the ever-living. The big bad guy from Thundercats here. This is his transformation. Uh, Mumra turns is, is a mummy that lives in a sarcophagus inside a pyramid, and then he can transform himself through the power of the ancient spirits so he can go and, you know, fight the Thundercats. Um, he almost always seems to get defeated by seeing his own reflection. And uh, that seems like a bad, uh, it's a, a pretty bad weakness to have. So he has his headdress there. It's got little snakes on the top. It's got all the little ribbons in the back. He's got his ripped up cape. And he's got a few mummy wraps around his waist and a little skirt piece. He looks pretty good. Uh, it's weird to see Mumra not muscular. Uh, it kind of works with Lion-O. I feel like this kind of looks like a kid Lion-O, but it's hard to think of Mumra without, uh, without him being big and ripped. Uh, but there's also something inside my Mumra. Some little piece of vinyl or something stuck inside him. I wonder if I break him open if I win a prize. All right, next up we've got Chitara. The only... Well, there was a kid... Uh, the only adult female on the main Thundercats team in the beginning of the series. She's got her bow staff for her weapon. She's got that same kind of 
flat Lego person torso there. Uh, she doesn't look as fast this way. That head seems like it would fall over if she ran real, real fast like she does in the show. They did a great job, though, painting the spots all over her hair. That's uh, pretty impressive. Last up, we've got Panthro armed with his nunchucks. The red and blue cat claw nunchucks there. Um, not really a lot of detail in them. Like You can't really see the cat paws. And I do have a little paint mishap on his one claw on the back. The blue one there. I don't know if I can aim it to the camera right. But it's kind of right there. There's a little bit of blue paint missing. He does have his spikes sculpted on, which is unique to him compared to all the other ones I looked at. Even the uh, Masters of the Universe ones all just had flat torsos with no raised detail. But at least Panthro has his spikes because those are pretty important to his character. Don't step on my semi flange. One of my favorite, uh, <laughs> favorite Panthro lines. All right. So these are the... Funko Vinyl Thundercats figures. I'm not sure if they have released any others. I picked them up at Toys R Us on clearance. Keep your eyes peeled. If you want to pick them up, you might be able to find them somewhere else as well. Uh, I'm sure other stores have, have purchased them besides just Toys R Us's. But thanks for watching this super exciting, outrageous tour review. In the comments down below, let me know what you think of the vinyl figures. Make sure to like, subscribe, and check out our other videos. All right. What we got? Ancient Spirits of Evil transform this decay form to Mumra, the ever-living. They kind of look like kid versions. Yeah, John, I, I think they kind of seem like kid uh, kid versions, too. Not Frank Castle, Rip Toys R Us. Yeah, I was there last week, uh, a friend of mine, and I went over there. We had a little time to kill after work before we went to a, a, an event. And it's really depressing. It's, <laughs> it's really sad. What's my favorite... Toys R Us memory. All right, I have a good one. I have a lot of good ones. I mean, I, I've, I've spent a lot of time at Toys R Us. Um, I think my favorite one from when I was a kid, anyway, was I I don't know what grade I was in. It was in the, the early 90s. Uh, Ninja Turtles was now my, like, favorite thing. I guess it was maybe, the, it may have been the really, really late 80s because the story involved Batman 88. So maybe it was 1988. I'm, I'm, I sometimes have trouble keeping track of, <clears throat> of, of, of the years that things happened when I was a kid. But anyway, we went to Toys R Us, and Toys R Us was a rare thing when I was a kid. Montgomeryville was, uh, which was the closest Toys R Us to us. Montgomeryville, PA, was like 45 minute drive from where I grew up. I grew up in the middle of nowhere, and um, so we would go like before Christmas and maybe before my birthday to kind of make a list. And I, I think my mom probably bought the stuff while we were there uh, and just was good at hiding it because I doubt she drove back. But um, we went in and there was right as you go in and, and, and the way the modern Toys R Us is, there's like a cattle chute. They, they force you over into that little section on the side. It wasn't like that originally, but in that section, there was a, a Ninja Turtles display and it was like floor to ceiling. It seemed like as a kid, just enormous amounts of toys and it was all Ninja Turtles, and it was like all the original characters, which um, I think they were out for a year already. Because I, I I had given up on getting us uh, an April. I just never found her. I had the four turtles. I had Splinter. I had Bebop and Rocksteady, and I think a Foot Soldier. So I didn't have Shredder. I didn't have April. Um, but there were some other figures out, so this couldn't have been the very, very first year. And so that day... My mom just said, like, look, just pick out whatever it is you want. Just get everything you want, and you're not going to get it right away. So uh, the toys that I picked out that day became Easter presents and birthday presents, I think. Um, I picked out Usagi Ujimbo. I picked out Splinter, not Splinter, Shredder, and April, and I think Ace Duck, who was also one of my favorite Ninja Turtle figures. So I grabbed all of those, and we also got Batman 88, the, the Michael Keaton Batman figure on the on the gold card that day. And I ended up begging my mom for Batman when we got home. Uh, and that was the one she gave me early. And then I got some for, for Easter, and then, like I said, some for my birthday. Uh, and that was one of the rare times where I knew what I was getting. But basically, she knew that these were figures I had been asking for for a while and that we didn't see anywhere. And, and if I didn't grab them then, I probably wasn't going to get them. So that's my favorite Toys R Us memory as a little kid. 
Uh, my favorite memories as an adult is just going there with friends and walking around. Uh, my friend Nick, oftentimes I used to text him and be like on a Saturday morning, hey, you want to do a couple laps at Toys R Us? And we would just both drive there and walk around. Ryan, who appears on this channel from Cinemassacre, I love walking around Toys R Us with Ryan. We just go and he spouts off these amazing facts he knows about business world related to toys. And I tell him about, you know, new stuff coming out and we just have a good time. Uh, we did a we did a fun memory video basically like that we walked around right when they announced that Toys R Us was closing. So if if you are interested in that kind of thing, you can check it out here on the channel. Um, anything else special? I met New Adventures He-Man. Not this He-Man. New Adventures He-Man at the Montgomeryville Toys R Us when I was a kid. And I didn't know that show was coming out. I didn't know he was going to be there. We went for some reason. Again, it was like, you know, before Easter, my birthday or something like that. And we walked down the aisle and they were like, oh, it's He-Man and Skeletor. And I had never seen the show. And I think it was the first time I ever saw the toys. And I was just confused. He-Man with pants. He-Man with a ponytail. He-Man with a lightsaber. Skeletor wore a helmet and looked like a robot. I, I don't know. It blew my mind. And uh, now I wish I had a photo of that. But, you know, the, we didn't have a digital camera. We'd have a camera with us. You know, my mom's 35 millimeter film camera was probably at the house. Uh, but I, I wish I had a picture with He-Man and Skeletor now, but it was pretty funny. Um, that was how I found out about New Adventures. And I never saw the cartoon show as a kid. Uh, I just would see the toys and be like, oh, they're they're weird. Uh, <laughs> I like them now, but I, I just didn't really know what they were as a kid. All right, should we do one more? You guys, you guys down to hang out for one more toy review? We'll get set up. I'm going to use this. For height, the last of the Funko lot here to go through. Uh, let's see, grab this. Anybody else have any other questions they want to post for this segment before I start on the next video? Uh-oh. It's Power Rangers time. We're getting out of the 80s, going into the 90s. Go, go, Power Rangers. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, I guess I'll give you a little... It's morphin' time. I'll give you a little bit of, of Power Ranger backstory, I guess, before I start this segment. So, Power Rangers came out in 1993. Uh, is that third grade? Third grade? Fourth? No. Uh, end of fourth grade, maybe? I remember talking about it with kids in fifth grade a lot. So when Power Rangers came out, I was just too old to collect toys. And I still did, but it was mostly like, um, I was I, I was really when I started collecting old toys. I, I was going back, you were 10, Chris, so I, I might have been 11. Because uh, I'm, I'm a year older than most of the people in our graduating class. Um, fifth grade, okay, fifth, fifth grade. That's kind of what I thought. I remember talking about it in fifth grade. And... Um, do you remember Dustin? Are you, I don't know whether Dustin Fair went to high school with us, but this kid Dustin Fair in my class, we would always talk about Power Rangers every day. Um, anyway, the the first commercial I ever saw was um, I, it was for the toys, or maybe I guess it was for the cartoon show. Can't believe the Pink Ranger. Mm -hmm. So the, the the first commercial I saw, yeah, it wasn't for the toys. It was for the show, I guess. Episode of the show. And it showed like King Sphinx and Goldar Giant. It showed the Megazord. It showed the Rangers just a little bit. I don't really think it showed the Rangers out of their costumes at all. But I was so excited because as a kid, I watched Voltron. As a kid, I watched Godzilla. I watched Ultraman. I watched all that stuff. And I was like, whoa, a live action Voltron, Ultraman combination. Like, I didn't realize that the Rangers got inside Voltron. So I thought maybe they were big too. Um, but when, when the show came out, I watched it. I loved it. I really enjoyed it. My little cousins that were younger than me, they got the entire line of Power Ranger toys for Christmas. My aunt and uncle that live in Tioga County, which is like the middle of nowhere, were able to find all the Power Rangers uh, on the toy shelves at like Walmart and bought the entire wave and shipped it to my cousin to give to her kids. So when I used to go to their house to hang out, I would play with Power Rangers with them. But the only Power Ranger I owned as a kid was a Green Ranger because, like I said, I was just a little too old. I was mainly collecting vintage uh, Thundercats and, and vintage 
He-Man stuff. Or not He-Man. My vintage uh, Power Rangers carded up there on the wall. Did you ever watch the Power Rangers films? I have seen both the films. I didn't see either one of them in the theater, uh, but I have watched both of them. Um, Power Rangers the movie, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie, Power Rangers Turbo, and then the newest one, the the uh, Saban's Power Rangers I saw. Also, I really kind of hope – I, I can't figure out whether I want Hasbro to reboot or just continue with what they have. Because uh, Hasbro says they do want to do a Power Ranger movie, and I did enjoy the recent movie. It wasn't perfect, but it was pretty good. And I could see them either using the Zeo Crystal, to, Zeo Crystal to just change out the Zords and the suits and just move forward with it, but keep the actors, or I could see them just starting over again. Because Mighty Morphin is the most popular series, so I, I could see them maybe wanting to uh, cash in on that and just do another movie with Mighty Morphin and maybe make it even more. Uh, Mighty Morphin esque than than that first movie. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna run through this section, and then any questions that come up after that, we'll we'll run through. Um, all right, hey boys and girls, welcome to another super exciting, outrageous toy review. Today we're taking a look at all five Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Dorbs. This is the five Rangers from the base set. I think they might have made a Green Ranger, but I'm not positive. I saw these guys at Toys R Us. They had four of the five there uh, on discount, and I thought about getting them, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to get Jason because they didn't have all of them. And then my buddy Nick rooted around, and he found a Kimberly, and I was like, ah, thanks, Nick. Now i got to buy all five. But that's cool. Uh, I, I, I really do like having all these guys this way. So Dorbs are a nice heroes. It just seems like that's kind of uh, where the inspiration went. Oh, like a Dorb, it would be a pint-sized hero. So these are the... The rare example of a toy that Funko tapes shut. Almost all the Funko stuff is fan-friendly and easy to reopen. These guys are stickered, but that's okay. If you guys are interested in Power Ranger content, SEO Toy Review has Power Ranger videos every Saturday morning. Today's was a Pop Final video. Tyrannosaurus! It's my best Jason impression. Uh, I have met the actor that played Jason, the actor that played Zach, the actor that played Billy, and the actress that played Kimberly. Um, rest in peace, Twee. I'll never get to meet her, the Yellow Ranger. I did meet Kimberly, or not uh, Kimberly, Karen Ashley, the second Yellow Ranger, and I've met um, Johnny Bosch, who played the second Black Ranger. All right. So there's the Yellow Ranger. Sabertooth Tiger! Come on. Pterodactyl! Gosh, how iconic was that morph scene? The morph scenes on the newer seasons are way better, but man, it didn't matter. That original one got me so hyped. Here we can share this one. Get you guys elevated there. Uh, that the just that that music and that effect, which was really simple, uh, just worked so well. Triceratops! Billy, you can hop over there, Jason. And Zach. Mastodon! All right, so I got the Power Rangers Dorbs out of their packages. They remind me a little bit of nesting dolls, those, those Russian dolls that, that fit inside each other. They're not nesting dolls. Uh, they do have that one point of pop articulation. But just something about their bodies kind of makes me think of that. They all have really big round heads. They have smiling faces. 
uh, the you know the helmet just has a little yeah, smile. Their bodies are pretty much flat except for the arms. The one raised detail they have is the little holster for the blade blaster there. They have blank uh, power coins on their on their chest, which is the same as the pop vinyls. They don't paint in that little detail. Um, they have the little diamonds on their sleeves there, as well as on their boots, which are really tiny. These guys are super adorable, super cute. The Mighty Morphin helmets are so cool. I, I, you know, I, I, I feel like it's all nostalgia, and that's the reason why everybody loves Mighty Morphin. The diamonds are a little goofy, but I don't think you can top these helmets. They look exactly like the place they get their power from, and I think that's really cool. <coughs> hmm. I don't know what I did with my beverage, but I'm parched. <clears throat> so this is my, the actually... This is the first set of Dorbs I've ever collected. Um, I think they make quite a few different series of Dorbs. I just haven't gotten into them yet. Uh, there's so many different Funko lines to collect. I'm really excited about some of the new stuff they're doing with like the Savage World figures, which are big, chunky um, He-Man looking figures. And uh, But there's something for everybody. You want cute and cuddly, you got the Dorbs. If you want a blank stare, you got pop vinyls. <laughs> if you want something really tiny, they got pint-sized heroes. And I just think all their different lines are really cool. So thanks for watching this super exciting, outrageous tour review. Make sure to like, subscribe, and check out our other videos. Yes, the Savage World Thundercats are so cool looking. I really, really, really can't wait for them to come out. <clears throat> I want to get them so bad. I'm hoping my Funko connection comes through for me and sends them. Uh, but I think there's going to be a fight because I think that uh, I think Mike Matei from the Angry Video Game Nerd was going to want to be in that video with me, and then he's going to he's going to want to want to keep some of them. So I don't know. Did you ever watch the He-Man movie with Dolph Lundgren? Yes, I've seen Masters of the Universe. I actually tried to rent it as a kid with a friend of mine, but it turned out the only copy the video store had was a beta copy, and we didn't have a beta player. Uh, so I did not see it as a little kid, but I've seen it since then. Uh, it's pretty funny. It's it's not the best, but it's great. Is Mike Matei from around here? Yeah, Mike Matei lives around here. Um, all the... All the Cinemassacre guys live around here. James, Mike, Ryan, um, and even their kind of support crew. Uh, they're all semi-local. Um, they're spread out a little bit, but but nobody's real far. Um, in fact, probably all, all of them will be at Too Many Games coming up. If you guys are into video games, there's an awesome retro video game con uh, convention in Oaks, Pennsylvania, not too far from, from where I'm at. And all those guys go to that. This is actually going to be the first year in, in quite a few years. I'm going to miss it. I'm going to Chattanooga, Tennessee for JoeCon. Uh, this is the very last G.I. Joe convention that they're doing, and so I'm going to miss it there. Will you ever do a gaming stream? I have done uh, a Power Ranger gaming stream with Ryan from Cinemassacre and my friend Paul and my friend Tony that just did all the uh, Jurassic World videos with me. And... Yeah, we played a, a Power Ranger game not from not too long ago, and I was the worst one, and I was playing as Jason. I felt really bad because uh, <laughs> I'm just not good at video games. I love watching video games, uh, but I'm terrible at playing them. So uh, I would like to do more. Maybe this summer I'll have some more free time. I actually have the uh, Dino Thunder video game. Is that a GameCube game? I have that, and I have the... Uh, o Operation Overdrive Game Boy game, I think. Uh, my friend Paul gave it to me to hang on to uh, for us to do a live stream with him sometime. So so maybe we'll get to do some gaming streams down the road. I don't have a good setup for doing that. Uh, it, this is literally just the web camera built into my laptop right here. When I go to ScreenWave Media, my um, my network, which you know, where all the Cinemaster guys are from, um, they have like an amazing setup, and it's like no hassle. I don't know how to do it, but they just set it up, and, and we did that Power Ranger <laughs> video that one time. Uh, in fact, if you watch James, there's a James and Mike Monday episode where they play the, the Fighter Edition game, and they reference that there's a new Power Ranger game. 
they, the footage they go to is actually from my live stream of it. So you can see me and Ryan and, and Tony and Paul in the little corner of that Cinemasker video, which is pretty funny. Um, so anybody else have any other questions? This, this is a pretty good stream. Went for an hour tonight. I had a lot of stuff to unbox, so that worked out well. Um, I really appreciate you guys checking this out, even the people that have already left. Uh, and everybody's going to watch this later on the, on the rebroadcast. But I think the live streams are pretty fun. It's a lot harder to do a live stream, I think, than doing just a regular review because you, you can't stop to think about it or to rephrase stuff very easily. Um, but they are fun. There's some, there's an aspect to that live, the live situation and, and getting the live comments that makes it really fun. I don't know. So if there's no, nobody else has any other questions, I'm probably going to end the stream because it's 1130 here in Pennsylvania. Um, let's see. I don't know. I actually have to go to a too many games meeting tomorrow and near the convention. And even though I'm not going to be there, I'm just going to, to, uh, to uh, show my support and hang out with my friends that are actually going to be there this year. Uh, not Fred Castle. Thanks for streaming. No problem, buddy. Thanks for watching. This is awesome. When is Too Many Games? Too Many Games is um, the, 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 the 21st of this month, June 21st, right? Uh, no, no, that's Thursday, Friday. What's that Friday? The, the, the 22nd, 22nd, 23rd, 24th. Is too many games at Oaks, um, the the Greater Philly Expo Center at Oaks, Pennsylvania. Two weeks, yes, in two weeks. Too many games is in two weeks. They will have tons of amazing guests. Um, not Pixel Dan this year, but he was there the past two years. Um, AVGN will be there for sure. Mike Matei will be there for sure. Um, they got tons of concerts. Um, I I I, I don't want to like claim I know who all is going to be there, but I'm sure the Game Chasers will be there. They're always there. Uh, Shane from Re-Res is usually there. Um, James from Epic Game Music is pretty much always there. Um, Bad Graphics Gamers. 8-Bit Brody, I'm sure, will be there. Justin Silverman from Silvermania. Toadie from Hack the Movies. They got the real celebrities there. Um, I love those guys, but... <laughs> yeah. Uh, is that not work? Does that not work for you, Chris? I saw you, you, you weren't, didn't seem too happy about it being in two weeks. Uh, is that a bad weekend? It is three days. Um, so maybe, maybe you can get in one of the days. They don't, I don't think they sell Friday only badges. I think it's just the weekend maybe or something like that. Oh, just surprised. Uh, yeah. And I'm so bummed I'm not going to be there because it is always a blast. It's one of my favorite cons and I just work registration. Like, like I said, I don't, I'm not really a gamer. Uh, so I, I go, I run registration, I, I help check people in, um, and then, you know, hang out, walk the floor, watch some of the concerts and stuff like that, and just enjoy the, enjoy the con atmosphere. Um, yeah, Keith, uh, Keith Apicary was there one year, actually two years. He is a, a hoot. He's a nut. So funny. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever seen any of his videos. Uh, his name's really Nathan Barnett, but Keith Apicary is one of his characters. And Keith is a huge Sega Genesis fan and is just crazy. The, the one year Keith uh, took his booth, he had like a, you know, a, a, a guest booth and he filled it with trash, like a barrel and a tire and a, um, a skid. And he would just lay in there like he was dead. And he wrote like Keith Apicary on the curtain in duct tape and put arrows on the floor in duct tape, leading you to his, his performance art thing. He actually wanted them to, park the forklift in his thing, but they said that it's not allowed to be on the show floor during a, uh, a convention. And then the next year he had one and he went outside and I don't know where he got them from, but he got all these tree branches and he put them in there and he called it a forest. Bat Quinn forever. Hey, nice to see you. Yes. Nathan is funny. Yeah. He is hilarious. Um, I have a video on, on this channel about fidget spinners. I know, I know. I, that was my video for last uh, too many games where I got like as many of my friends as possible to be in it. And uh, Keith, Keith was playing the fidget spinner. And he's like, this is what everyone's excited about. Uh, uh, it, it was pretty funny. Um, yeah. So I don't know. That's my big plug for too many games. The, the, my two favorite conventions of the year that I, I never miss except for this year. It's too many games and retro con. 
So uh, those, if you if you live in Pennsylvania and, or New Jersey or I don't know someplace else close, and you want to meet me or you're going to be there and you want to say hi, uh, you know either one of those cons except too many games this year. Uh, do you have a favorite one of the Power Ranger Dorbs? Well, my favorite is probably Jason, just because Jason's my favorite of the Mighty Morphin Rangers. The Green Ranger is so cool, but it's like cheating because he has like the Dragon Zord and a special shield. But when the show first started, I loved the Red Ranger. Have I seen Solo? Yes, I have. Um, I thought it was okay. I, I don't really see the big problem with it. It's a little bit too... I like they. I don't need to see how he got his gun. Uh, like it seemed a little too on the nose with some of that stuff. Like why couldn't he just have the gun when he started or uh, find the gun or I don't know. Like he didn't need the gun. Like it it didn't could have been in the in the glove box of a speeder or something. Like it, it just seems so weird that like they made a point of showing him get that showing him meet Chewie. Um, I don't know. I guess spoilers alert if anybody hasn't seen it yet. Um, you know, how does he get the Falcon? How, how does he do this? How do you do that? It's a little too much of that. I would have just been okay with just a Han Solo story. Um, it didn't have to have every little origin, even including his name. Um, I didn't really like that they used the Imperial March in it. I thought that was odd. I, I think that was probably a choice from the first directors when it was going to be a comedy. Um, but it wasn't bad. I, I would watch another Han Solo movie. I think the second one might be better because they wouldn't have to go through all the, like, hit you over the head with the, hey, this is the first time he's seen Chewie. Hey, this is the first time he has a gun. Hey, this is the first time he's seen the Falcon. Hey, 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 you know. And they could just do a good story. Uh, how about Deadpool 2? Of course I saw Deadpool 2. It was good. Um, I think I liked the first one better. The second one was kind of convoluted. It, it was great. It was fun action, fun, you know, Deadpool craziness. I liked that there were more characters in it. Um, I don't want to give stuff away, uh, cause I feel like it's the story to it is less obvious than the story to Solo was. Um, but there's a, a gimmick, a, a trick thing in it. It's actually kind of two of them that, that control the storyline and uh, having both of them in the same movie seemed a little bit much, uh, when they all jump out of the plane. So the funniest thing is that they don't jump out of a plane. They jump out of a helicopter, and I'm not sure if that even works. Uh, I've been meaning to do some research. I want to ask my dad. My dad worked for Carson Helicopters, which is a company in, here in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, for 35 or 36 years. Uh, I'm not sure if a helicopter can get high enough for you to be able to use a parachute. Uh, but that's what they did in the movie. Uh the, the sequence is so funny. It's it's the best part of that movie, and it was a big surprise. Like that, it's a great scene and not what you're expecting. What are your favorite Marvel comic book storyline series? Um, so as a kid, I had a subscription to Amazing Spider-Man and the Uncanny X-Men. Uh, that would have been in the, in the '90s, and I got the actually the first issue of my Spider-Man subscription as a kid was the 30th anniversary edition. It had a hologram on the front, which blew me away. And uh, so I read Spider-Man and Batman, or Spider-Man and, and X-Men for several years as a kid. And including like the Executioner song, that was during that, that timeline that I had the X-Men comics, which was hard to read as a kid because it, the Executioner song was split over a whole bunch of different series. Same thing happening with Batman Nightfall. Um, but luckily, Batman... Um, I, I knew a guy writing Batman. My best friend growing up, his dad uh, is Doug Mensch, who is one of the creators of Bane. And so I got free copies of Batman as a kid. So that story, I had all the issues that he wrote. I didn't have the other issues, so I had to go out and get them. But it made it easier to get get a comic series that was printed over multiple books if I didn't have to buy all the books. Do you collect X-Men figures? I have, um, I have... A bunch of the 90s X-Men, actually there's two weekends ago, or two Wednesdays ago, I think, Flea Market Finds on my channel was a bunch of Toy Biz figures. I had a bunch of them as a kid and then sold them. Uh, I've been buying some of them back. I have some of the modern um, Marvel, um, Marvel Select, Marvel, um, I can't think of the word. The big guys, you know, that are nicely articulated, and as, as well as some of the three and three quarter inch Thundercats figures. They are pretty cool. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man had that hologram cover too. Yes. 
Um, and you, you, Chris, you remember when Doug came into school? Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, when uh, my friend's dad came in for um, back to school or uh, uh, career day. Yes, I remember that. It was pretty cool. You can't really see it that well. The lighting kind of messes us up. But right here is a drawing of Batman uh, that Paul Glacey did. Paul Glacey is a comic book artist that worked on a bunch of things with Doug. Um, most famously, I think, is Master of Kung Fu for Marvel. Uh, they did several Batman storylines together, including Batman vs. Predator 2 and uh, Batman Prey. Like, hunt the hunted is Prey, not like... <laughs> Batman pray. Uh, but he came to Doug's house when I was a, a junior in high school and I went over to see him and get some books signed. And I had met lots of different comic artists over the years that came to visit Doug, but it was the only time where I was brave enough to ask for a sketch, but I was also like older. A lot of them I met when I was in like, I don't know, second and third grade. Uh, so anyway, he, I asked him to draw, something for me and i didn't say what and he said well who's your favorite character and i said spider-man and batman he goes i don't draw spider-man i said i know that and he, he but i said you didn't ask me who's your favorite character who's my favorite character that you draw so he goes all right i'm gonna draw batman he goes stand like this and so i stood like this and he was drawing and he was talking to doug and they were you know laughing and stuff and at one point my arms got tired of my hands and he goes oh put your hands back up and so i stood like this for even longer and it was all done it's a headshot there's no body it's like cuts off the shoulders but he's smoking a cigarette, and it says, uh, I got to quit these bat butts, which I think was inspired by the fact that uh, my friend's dad, Doug, was smoking the whole time. And uh, his wife came over, Paul Glacey's wife came over, and she goes, that's terrible. You can't give a kid a picture of Batman smoking a cigarette. And I was, I don't know, 17 or 18, but I looked like a little kid. I had such a baby face. Uh, so he actually goes, all right, I'll make it up to you. And he pulled out original pages from the star Wars story shadows of the empire. They were once he was taken to cons and selling with them. And he goes, take whatever page you want. And, uh, I didn't know anything about the value of comic book pages back then. So I didn't grab a page that had like a really nice big picture of like a unique character. I just grabbed the page. that was the most star Wars one I could find that had like a tie fighter in like one little panel and an Imperial officer. But I am proud of that page. I keep it, uh, hanging up my house. And, uh, that's my Paul Glacey story. Uh, what's your main in MVC2? Marvel vs. Capcom 2? I don't have a main. I'm like the world's worst video game person ever. But um, when Marvel vs. Like, Street Fighter was out, I liked Cyclops and Chun-Li. Um, I, I don't know. Sorry. Will you do a collaboration video with Pixel Dan? If Pixel Dan has time, I will definitely do one with him. If you look on the channel under my other videos, I think I have a playlist called um toy reviews with guests or something like that that has videos i've done with mike Matei and pixel dan and justin silverman from silvermania and stuff like that that's a good place to go to try and find those videos um i might have only ever done one with dan i think so too many games two years ago i did one with him about figures that have uh pop out wing features like the um silverhawks and batman figures and um, we were going to do one last year. We were going to review uh, the Funko Reaction um, ET figures, and we just didn't have time. It's really hard at a con when um, somebody's a guest. They have to be at specific places, you know, to do their panels and be at their table and stuff like that. And then at night, there's, there's stuff to do, you know, hanging out and having fun. And uh, it's hard to ask somebody to – give up their time with all their friends because a lot of times there's lots of people they like at these cons to just go sit in a hotel room and film a, a video with you. Um, so I, I don't really put want to pressure Dan like that. Um, so I, it just didn't work out. We were, we were trying to do it and we just couldn't find a time. Uh, at last year's too many games. Um, yeah. So it just didn't work out. So maybe this year at RetroCon we can, there is uh, a, a commercial. I always do a commercial for RetroCon, a stop motion animated commercial. They're, there's a bunch on this channel. There's actually some on my original YouTube channel before I started SEO Toy Review. And um, it's always a bunch of like 80s toys trying to go into the convention uh, out in like the parking lot. So it involves all the like 80s vehicles and stuff like that, like the Ecto-1 and the 18 van and stuff. And Dan has agreed to do a voice for a character or do the narration at the end for me. 
uh, but he hasn't gotten back to me on what character he wants to be. So I don't know. I haven't filmed it yet, but we're kind of kicking around ideas and I will probably start shooting that in uh, the, the very end of June. Like when I get back from, from Joe con, I'm probably going to start on that and then I'll, I'll try and get him to uh, pick someone out. Will you see Mike Mate on your channel in the future? Will we see Mike Mate? Yes, we will definitely see Mike Mate. In fact, Mike was going to do a review of the Pine Size Heroes. He was going to do the unboxing with me originally, and it didn't work out the weekend we were going to do it. Um, he has a ton of stuff that he's been collecting recently. He he has a ton of GoBots that we have never shown on the channel before. He has been ferociously collecting the vintage um, Thundercats toys. And he's been adding to his He-Man collection quite a bit. So there's a very good chance that this summer we're going to get together and shoot at least two of those, maybe three of them. He also has uh, Jason the World Warriors figures. So we would like to do a bunch of those videos uh, and get them on the channel. There there are three videos on here that Ryan, my friend Ryan from Cinemasker, filmed with uh, Mike, the He-Man... Um, Thundercat, no, He-Man, uh, He-Man, Ghostbusters, and Transformers, sorry. They filmed them one night, uh, early on, before I really was friends with Mike, but I, you know, was friends with Ryan, I've been friends with Ryan. Uh, Ryan's actually the person that, that, uh, influenced me to start this channel. Ryan asked me to, uh, you know, take what I was kind of doing for fun and make it like a serious thing. And so, um, that's how I met Mike and, um. So they, they shot those first three without me. Then Mike has been in some videos with me. Basically, if we uh, he's going to be in the office shooting stuff with Ryan, and I'm going to shoot stuff with Ryan, then you know Mike will hop on. So there's some uh, haul videos that we did together. Some some um, like flea market, like just going through these bins of, of Power Rangers and uh, Transformers and Thundercats and whatever. Uh, so there's a there's a He-Man video like that where we talk, look at 2002 He-Man as well as vintage He-Man figures that came out of a tote. We look at some vintage Thundercats toys that came out of a tote. And there's one with Ryan in it where we just look through those totes, like, completely unsorted. And um, Mike's been in a few other random videos. Uh, yeah, he's he's always down to shoot. He's just very busy. So it just comes down to whether we can we can work out his schedule. Like, I have a day job. And Mike is busy streaming like all the time, so it's tricky to get to get all that stuff to line up um, when he comes when he comes to Screenwave to film with Ryan. It's like that's what's set, and they got to get it done so that way there's time to get it edited and everything like that. That there's a lot of turnaround to YouTube that a lot of people don't realize if you don't have a if you don't have a channel that updates regularly, you don't really realize that. Um, so you know you gotta you gotta be always shooting and always editing. Chris from Long's Toys can tell you all about that, I'm sure. Anybody else? This has been so much fun, guys. I really enjoyed it. This has been one of the best weekends in, like, forever. I was at a retirement party for one of my best friends from work on Friday night and had a blast. Uh, I was actually at a wedding earlier today, which was fun, with for two of my coworkers who got married. And then uh, now did a live stream, which was a ton of fun. So definitely thanks for... Thanks for, you know, checking it out. Any Anything else? Any last topics anybody wants to talk about before we uh, close this one down? Uh, Chris, what are you going to review next? Any, any, any hints for what's coming up next week? My week is, hey, Super64, my next week is very Funko heavy because I have a few things I already uh, did from the previous live stream that I'm going to put up. I'm kind of cheating a little bit. So I, I mentioned I'm getting ready to go to um, – I'm getting ready to go to JoeCon. So I need to have that whole week of videos done ahead of time. And I'll give you guys a hint. The week of JoeCon is going to be all Slaughter's Marauders G.I. Joe action figures. So I'm shooting them now. I have three of the those eight videos, I think, filmed. No, there's five more. Uh, five, six. Yeah. Ugh, math. Uh, yeah, so I have three of those, those videos shot. And, and half edited, um, and then the other ones I still need to shoot. So those are going up. So this week I'm trying to use up stuff that kind of I've pre-shot so that way I have time to finish those things to get ahead. It's really hard to constantly put out videos if you have anything going on in your life. Um, so you, you really got to work ahead. 
John, yep, really enjoyed the stream tonight. Awesome. I'm glad you liked it. Long's Toys, Imagine X, Play School, Common Rider, Build, Ultraman. So basically your your usual stuff, but that's cool. Um, have you seen, Chris, have you seen the Slime Pit? I know Dan did a review of it, the the Batman Imagine X Slime Pit that looks like the He-Man thing. Yes, that that's so cool. I love that set. It's very neat. When I decided to get some of the stuff out of my face, it's kind of... Shot was feeling a little crowded there. I need to get something on that door. Uh, I never really planned to shoot in here. Love the references, but hate slime toys. <laughs> yeah, so slime toys, I always had to play with outside when I was a kid. They had to be played with at my picnic table. My mom wouldn't let me play with slime toys in the house. Um, so, Muckman with the can of mutagen from the original Ninja Turtles always got played with outside. I had the Ghostbuster Firehouse. I don't think I ever poured the slime through it. I played with the slime. I slimed some guys out of the picnic table. But I don't think I ever took the firehouse outside to do it. My parents always took slime away immediately. Yeah, yeah, I I had to play with it outside. It was the only place I was allowed to do it. And then I would get some grass in it, and then it would just get thrown out, basically. Um, yeah, the slime, toys, the slime toys are fun, but it's a one-trick pony. Uh, it looks really cool, but it is, it is messy. I actually did a review on my old channel, the... Nicktoons Turtle, the, the modern turtles slime that they did for those. I bought all five canisters, and it's a it's a terrible video because I, I bought this little, like, I forget what they were called, like Flip or something like that. These little tiny portable cameras. The audio was terrible, but it got a lot of views. It was a popular video on my old channel, and uh, I tested it. I had carpet I was ripping out, and I dumped the slime on the carpet and picked it back up, and it came up perfectly. It didn't leave residue. It didn't stain. I was really impressed with that. Uh, but glad they did it in the wrong run. Do you prefer buying figures online or source? I prefer buying my toys in stores. I really dislike buying stuff online. Um, but unfortunately, that's what we're coming to. So I have lots and lots of toys bought online through like subscriptions, like the, the Masters of the Universe Classics figures. All of those came that way. Um, but I find that less fun. The G.I. Joe Collectors Club has a subscription service. That stuff comes in the mail. It's less satisfying. I don't like it when I can't find what I want, like when the hunt takes forever. But the hunt is fun. And with Toys R Us being gone, I, I'm really nervous about the hunt. Um, but, you know, I buy online when I have to. It just always feels kind of cheap. <laughs> um, and, and stuff gets frustrating if it's if it's real limited and you got to get online at just the right time. We were talking way earlier in the stream about the the NECA Ninja Turtles, and that's one of those things where it's just impossible. Um, I actually, to get Lucky and Cow from the Master Universe Classics line, I took a personal day from work. Uh, I actually had to get some work done, so I took a personal day. Oh, and I think it was like every, it was like a trifecta. The gas company needed to change the gas connection to my house, like they dug up my yard and changed a pipe. So I took a personal day. They did that. I did a bunch of work for work on my day off. And uh, I waited, and then I logged in, and I bought a whole bunch of cows and Lukies because two of my friend's birthdays are also in May, right around the same time as my birthday. And we were having this, like, joint, big, ridiculous uh, birthday party, and somebody else wanted to give them the Lukies and cows. So I bought them and then sold them to a friend at cost so he could give them to uh, two other friends. So it was kind of funny. But that was, like, the one time where I was able to grab those things. Whereas um, most times, if it if it's like a real specific quick sellout, I just have no chance of getting it because my job doesn't allow doesn't allow for that kind of stuff. Um, so actually, the one time I did run slime through my Ghostbuster firehouse was Ryan and Mike Matei shot that video about the Ghostbusters toy line, and they talked about dumping slime through it. So I took one. I have I have a good firehouse and a beater firehouse. I took my beater firehouse outside and dumped slime through it. The actually the Ninja Turtle slime I was talking about that I tested on the carpet. And so in that video, it cuts from Mike's house to actually my house. It's actually outside on the picnic table. Uh, you can see the brick wall of my house behind it uh, as the slime drips through through that firehouse. Um, so that's the one time I dripped slime through a, a Ghostbuster firehouse that I know of. Not a lot of lines had slime toys, but it works so well for Ghostbusters and Ninja Turtles because there's just slime in those in those series, you know. 
favorite series you like to collect for? So that's really hard. I collect so much stuff. If if I could only keep one collection, I would keep my GI Joes. I would get rid of everything but my GI Joes. I love them so much ever since I was a little kid. But I have all of the 1982 to 1994 figures. I need some weapons. I don't have all the vehicles. Um, but I really, really like them. I have like the aircraft carrier and I have the space shuttle. And um, that's my favorite line. I also have all of the Kenner Star Wars figures from 77 to 83 or 84, whatever the Power of the Force line ends. I don't have the Ewoks or the droids figures. Um, so that was kind of like the second line. When I was a kid, when I transitioned from playing with toys to collecting toys, I sold everything. I sold my He-Man, I sold my Thundercats, sold my Ninja Turtles for pennies on the dollar and reinvested all that money into G.I. Joe and Star Wars, which was very cool at the time. And I, I don't regret it just because I wouldn't have those collections if I hadn't done it. But now I've gone back and rebought like almost all the vintage Masters of the Universe and a lot of the vintage Ninja Turtles and uh the vintage thundercats although i was gonna i was considering skipping the vintage thundercats if the classics figures were all going to come out because they're just so good um but i have i probably have half the vintage thundercats and now i'm kind of like yeah i should do that and i've been focusing on them a little bit more because of that modern toys though i was really into reaction for a while i have a big display of them if you ever see in the other room where i do like the uh unboxings of the loot crates that whole like wall behind me is all um, that's all uh, reaction figures. I have lots of Master Universe classics. That's another you know, like current toy line. I, I have a lot of I buy a lot of pops. Um, I'm looking in a showcase next to me here that you can't see that has um, Silver Hawks, Cops and Crooks, some Star Wars stuff. Um, Boy, I need to fix that. There's stuff, like, falling over in there. I do not... Uh, all right, so here's a trivia thing. I do not have a lot of Transformers. I never had a lot of Transformers as a kid, and I still don't have a lot of Transformers. I had a couple of the, like, terrible Transformers. I had, like, Run Amok or Run Around or whatever, the guy that you pull back and he would, like, boop, transform just from driving. I had Streetwise, which is a cop car who's a combiner, but I never had anybody else to combine him with. So because I had kind of, like, the terrible Transformers... And because they didn't pose well, they, the the gimmick is cool, but they didn't they, they weren't like cool like fun robots. They were just more fun cars that transformed. I just didn't get crazy into Transformers. I loved the cartoon show. I loved the concept, uh, but the toys just didn't do it for me. And uh, so I never got crazy into Transformers. I did eventually get an Optimus Prime used at a yard sale, and I loved him for a long time. And then I traded him and all the Transformers I owned in the mid-90s for Power of the Force 2 figures, uh, which are, like, worthless. And I mean, the only one I regret getting rid of was that Optimus Prime. Um, now I have... I can see in that case, I have Masterpiece Soundwave, my favorite Transformer. I have a Hot Rod figure that came with a little Matrix of Leadership, which is the reason I bought him. And uh, I actually have a whole collection of Transformers that I need to do a collection sort with. Actually, that would be a fun video to do with Mike. Um, if I ever do that, I'll have a bunch of Transformers in my collection then. Like, they're, I have them, but they're all in a box waiting to be sorted for a video. Um, but I know they're in pretty rough shape. The, the kids that owned them before me were very rough. Uh, I've, I've, I've sorted collections that came from them. Basically, uh, a coworker of mine had boys that are a little older than me, and I dressed up as Orko for Halloween one year. And she's like, oh, I have that in my attic. And I was like, oh, Yeah. And uh, eventually, originally, I was going to, like, help her husband sort out the Transformers and then just turn into, like, hey, we're cleaning out our house. Just take all this stuff. Um, and then it turned into, oh, by the way, there's 12 boxes on your porch. Go get them. And there was, like, a box of He-Man stuff, which I reviewed with Ryan. There's a There was a box of G.I. Joe stuff, which I reviewed with my friend Paul. There's a box of Transformers to make a video about. There's a box of random stuff to make a video about. There was a box of Intellivision games, which I gave to 8-Bit Eric, if you are into him. He's probably coming to too many games also. And there was a box of, I think, it, uh, the LJN Dungeons & Dragons figures. And, oh, there was a box of Star Wars figures, which I reviewed with Ryan and Paul. Like, we just pulled them out of the box and took a look at them. And, and there were just a lot of damage 
toys. So without really digging through that box of Transformers, I know that um, there might be some perfect ones, but there's definitely going to be a lot of beat up ones. So, yeah, I, I don't I love Transformers as a concept, but I don't own a lot of Transformers toys. Sorry, you can't collect everything is what I'm going to say on that one. <laughs> I have a ton of Power Ranger stuff, and especially because Power Rangers is a really big part of this channel. Um, I have tons of Power Ranger stuff, and I buy almost everything that comes out for Power Rangers every season. Now, I didn't always um, like go crazy for Power Ranger stuff. I, I loved Mighty Morphin as a kid, uh, and then I just kind of lost interest. I didn't watch Zeo. I thought it was weird that the Red Ranger had a star on his helmet, and I just didn't watch that series. And then I lost track of Power Rangers. I mean, I knew what was going on. I remember watching the first few episodes of Dino Thunder when I was in college only because I was flipping channels and I saw Jason David Frank, the guy that plays Tommy. I was like, what? He's still on Power Rangers? This is insane. I had no idea that he was off for like decades and then came back. Um, so I watched a few episodes of that season on like a Saturday morning marathon or something. And then I didn't watch Power Rangers till Megaforce. And Megaforce was like an anniversary season. And I thought the uniforms looked really cool. And I watched the first episode and I really liked it. And people rag on Megaforce all the time, but it's what got me back into Power Rangers. So I watched Megaforce and Super Megaforce. And I know like that Infinity Battle, not Infinity War, uh, the Legendary War was not as good as it could have been. Um, but like I said, that's what revitalized my interest in Power Rangers. I went back after watching uh, the first few episodes of Megaforce, I rewatched all of. Mighty Morphin, and then I started watching. Uh, I started watching all the seasons I'd missed. So now I have seen up to Operation Overdrive. I'm watching that now, but I don't really like it, which is making it really hard to making it really hard to get through it. Um, now I, I bought every season on DVD, <laughs> and uh, and then of course I'm, I watched the current seasons. But but Ninja Force is like, ugh. And, uh, it's it, Ninja, yeah, Ninja Steel is like, eh, and Operation Overdrive is, eh. so that's making it hard to get through. But some of the seasons I would watch really fast, uh, you know, just keep cranking through the episodes. And I've also been watching some of the Sentai. I've seen Zoo Ranger and, um, gosh, I can't remember the Japanese names of all of them, but those seasons that the White Ranger comes from, you know, in the Thunder Megazords and, uh, maybe one other one. Oh, um, the Alien Rangers. Uh, Kaku Ranger, I've seen that one also, which was cool. Jungle Fury is good too, which is right after Operation Rangers. Yeah, I know there's some good ones coming up. I just got to power through it. It's just anytime I watch TV, I'm not editing or filming. And so uh, if it's not really captivating me, then I go, oh, I could be getting ahead on videos. So um, I I'm having a hard time. Yeah, Die Ranger, that's the name of that season. Um, the White Rangers from Die Ranger. Uh, Cocker Rangers out. Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed Cocker Ranger, actually, a fair amount. It's, it's a really goofy season, but it actually made me like the Alien Rangers more because I always thought they were kind of terrible, mostly because of the, the Aquatar terrible makeup and the and the goofy, um, the goofy, like, underwater sound effect they had for their voices. But that season is great. I wish they could have used it better, but it's hard. It has a lot of, like, weird uh, 60s Batman like sound effect things that show up on the screen that they decided to edit around because that, that wouldn't really feel like Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. And then like the, the big bad guy from from Kaku Ranger became the like a minor character, really. So it's just kind of weird the way they did it. Um, I give them credit for, for being as creative as they are. That's why I like watching the Sentai to see what the differences are. Um, I wish they would put out, so Shout Factory has been putting out these different Sentai series, and now they're finally putting out Sentai that came out before Power Rangers started, but I wish they would put out the, the oldest season that, like, is an American season we haven't gotten yet, so, like, they're gonna do Time Force soon, uh, Time Ranger, whatever it is, so, like, I wish they would do that, but also then release whatever season is complete in America, so, like, I would like to watch the Japanese, uh, Dino Charge, and the Japanese... Ninja Steel and the Ninja and the Japanese um, Mega Force. Um, I, I think they would be really cool. I've watched some of the Japanese movies for Power Rangers with the subtitles, and I, I enjoy them a lot. Um, yeah, I, I just don't, I just don't do torrent stuff. I, uh, 
I don't know. I feel bad. I'm a content creator. And growing up with people that were authors as friends and stuff like that, I just feel bad pirating stuff. Uh, so I just kind of wait for the DVDs to come out so that way people get their royalties. I don't, I try not to skip through ads on uh, YouTube channels that I like. <laughs> if it's like a Watch Mojo thing, I'll skip it. But if it's Pixel Dan video or Cinemask or whatever, I sit and watch the ad the whole way through. Well, it's not available uh, to not pirate. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, that's why I'm just waiting to see what happens. Uh, I wonder whether the Marvel, or the, I keep saying Marvel, I wonder if the Hasbro deal will mess with Shout Factory or not. I will buy one available. Yeah, no, I, 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 I know. Uh, it's not, it's not the end of the world to pirate something like that if it's not available. But I, I just don't usually, I just don't usually get to it. Um, I also just like physical media. Are you into Legos? Yes, I like Legos. Um, I don't buy a lot of Legos. I have like tons of Legos from when I was a kid, like a giant tub. And uh, I had tons of castle sets as a kid and some space Legos. I do buy sets occasionally now, um, but just not a lot. They're hard to display because they can come apart real easy. And they're hard to dust and things like that. And they just take up a lot of space. So I don't buy a ton of Lego, but I do love Lego. I love looking at the Legos. I love playing with Lego. Uh, Mini figures are a ton of fun. So yeah, definitely Lego is a good thing it's also very time consuming if you i don't know how there are brick channels and lego channels on youtube i don't know how they do it unless they have a team of people because it takes so long to build stuff i had um uh, come here mattel sent me a bunch of the mega constructs pokemon sets and some of some other sets like the um the advanced builders or whatever they were called, the pirate ship, or not a, a Viking ship. And those took so long to build. I can't tell you how many episodes of Power Rangers Wild Force I watched while building that Viking ship from um, the, the, the advanced builders from Mega Constructs. Um, I, know, I know that's not Lego, but it, it's the same concept. Just it's very time-consuming to build them if you're trying to make a video to do a review. Um, but they are fun. Definitely cool. I buy Legos for my nieces a lot. Um, and so that's kind of where most of my modern Lego purchases go is buying fun little sets for, for my niece to build so I can play with Legos with her. Um, so that's kind of it on the Legos. Anybody else have anything else or I'm going to end this cause it's midnight here. Uh, and I said I was going to end this like forever ago. So, all right. Thanks for watching this super exciting, outrageous tour review. Make sure to like subscribe, check our other videos. Thank you so much for joining the stream. It has been so much fun. Uh, I'm going to try and figure out a way of doing this more regularly. It's hard, though, if I don't have a lot of stuff to uh, to unbox or whatever. Thanks again. Until next time. Yep, you got it. See you guys.